Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, and good afternoon. Good. The, uh, wow. Um, yeah. Good afternoon, Missouri Democrats. Uh, <laughs> First, let me thank our uh, our chairman, Mike Sanders. Mike has done and is doing an outstanding job for us here. Uh, he brings a, a whole new level of energy uh, to the state party. Um, he brings, quite frankly, a whole level of energy to any room he walks into. Uh, our leader is chairman of our party, Mike Sanders. Um, he is not only serves in this position, but is a, is a rising star with an incredible future in our party. And we so much appreciate that he has uh, given us this time period while at the same time running the county uh, and doing that incredibly well uh, back in Jackson County to also uh, do this and, and doing double duty in that with his, his family, triple duty. We really appreciate the sacrifice you're making for our party. Now, it's a good time to take a second here and just walk back with me for a second four years ago. You know, as far as the election, we were excited four years ago. We were energized. We weren't going to let anything get in our way. And we won, okay? And we won big. We won because the people of Missouri believed we could do things differently than what was happening before. And you know something? We have, okay? <laughs> I mean, look around the country. I mean, other state governments, quite frankly, Washington, mired in gridlock, fighting and finger pointing. I mean, we don't need to look very far to see that. Folks too busy yelling at each other to recognize where common ground might exist. This mentality of my way or the highway may sound great at rallies, but it really doesn't work in practice when it comes to the hard duties of serving the people and moving your state forward. To say that you have no room for reason is to say you have no interest in solutions. And quite frankly, we're just better than that in Missouri. We're not out there just yelling at each other. We're out there doing everything we can to work with each other to make things better. Our time in these positions is relatively short. They come and they go. When we have the chance to do what we're doing, we have to make a difference. We're not just pointing fingers, we're extending our hands. We're not giving up our values, but together, we're showing there's a lot more that unites Missourians than divides us. We're, sh we're showing that the, folks from, that the folks from big cities and small towns, east, west, north, south, all across our state, they can come together. Together we're showing that there are issues where folks from different sides of the aisle can find common ground. Because, fellow Democrats, the challenges we've faced over these past few years have been too big to do it the old way. They've been too big for the lines of division to stop us in our tracks. In 2008, we got hit with a national recession, the likes of which most of us have never seen, only to be followed by a series of unspeakable natural disasters, the like of which we pray we never see again. Sure, the challenges have been tough. But the people of Missouri are tougher. You know? When I took office, the national recession was just peaking. And we faced, literally on my first day in office, a $200 million budget shortfall right out of the gate. But we didn't throw up our hands or bury our heads in the sand. We didn't expect a handout or beg for a bailout. We rolled up our sleeves. We got to work. And we did it together. Together, we've balanced our budget every year. And we did it in a way that is consistent with our values. OK? <laughs> Unlike other states, we kept funding level for our K-12 classrooms, even in the toughest budget times. And this year, we're doing even better. In the coming weeks, I'll sign a budget that provides record funding for K-12 education. But, no, absolutely.
It's because we value our public schools. We value and respect our teachers. We believe and understand that public education is the step towards the future and that the stronger your education system is, the more likely you win the future. And we know there's nothing more important than preparing both our children and our workers for the economy of the future. And that's why, not just K through 12, but last year, in some of the most difficult budget times ever, we upped the amount of money we spent on customized training for workers out there by 50%, investing in the workers who are going to build the future in Missouri. Okay? Because we know that Missourians are the hardest working people in America, and when given the opportunity and the skills, they'll rise to the occasion and outwork anyone in the world, okay? You know, and businesses around the country have taken notice. Instead of shutting down its plant at Clay Como, Ford's expanding it with over a billion dollar investment that will create 1,600 new jobs. And on the other side of the state in Wentzville, General Motors just broke ground on its $380 million expansion, creating another 1,600 brand new jobs. You all know that my first act as governor was to sign an executive order for Auto Jobs Task Force. Think back to 2009 when I did that. It's not exactly like cars were rolling off the, the, uh, the sales lots uh, throughout, the, throughout the country. But we knew then that cars were going to be built in the future, and we wanted them to be built in the Show Me State. Now, the jobs I talked about, that's a lot of good UAW jobs. In fact, you know something? Those aren't jobs. Those are careers, okay? <laughs> careers of using your brain and your body and your competitiveness to build something that's the best in the world, okay? <laughs> Maybe that's why in, over in the Kansas City side, Ford is insourcing a vehicle only made in Europe now to make that newest model here in Missouri, and GM is building a brand new vehicle, the only place in the world, the first that's going to be built on the Winsfield side. We are, in fact, competing for the future right there. The chairman talked about the fact that we've already created 35,000 new jobs already this year. That's sixth in the nation. That's not six per cap. That's six. And there's some other states that are a little bigger than us. We're catching them, but they're, they're, I'm not sure we're going to get the size of New York here in the next few years. Our unemployment rate has been below the national average for 32 months ru running. I mean, we're moving forward, but we can't stop now. I mean, you make success when you get on the right path, and then you stick with it to get to the finish line. In my three and a half years as governor, we've expanded our A-plus scholarship program so that an additional 65,000 Missouri high school students can earn a degree at one of our community colleges and enter the workforce debt-free. <laughs> Working together, we, we froze tuition at our colleges. My first, every public two-year and four-year school in Missouri for the first two years that I was your governor. And now, in this period since I've been your governor, We've led the nation in holding down the cost of college tuition, okay? We're moving forward, but we cannot stop now. When I took office, too many Missouri families who had a child with autism were unable to get their insurance companies to cover the proper treatment their children needed. No more. Today, 1.6 million families are covered by the autism mandate that we passed. And much more important than that, over 4,000 young kids are currently getting ABA treatment paid for by that benefit across the Show Me State so that they can live up to their God-given potential. <laughs> Together, we made sure that families with an autistic child will never again be denied the care they need. We're moving forward, but we can't stop now. And a few years ago, there were thousands of Missourians with developmental disabilities on waiting lists 
the state level when I can, I mean, it's thousands, unable to get services they needed to live full, independent lives. So together, at the county level, at the state level, working with our federal partners, working with the private sector, we established the Partnership for Hope to provide care for our disabled friends and neighbors. Today, that partnership serves 1,300 Missourians who were on a waiting list, who are now getting services to live up to their God-given potential in 91 counties in the St. Louis City. And with the budget that's in front of me now, we'll be able to continue to expand that program until we move that waiting list down to the very number we want to have, which is zero. <laughs> That program is changing lives, but we're moving forward, but we cannot stop now. When a few narrow interests tried to take our entire state backwards, we stood united. We united on behalf of Missouri employees to make sure they don't get discriminated against in the workplace. You are not going to build an economy of the future by discriminating at the workplace. I had to veto that bill. We sustained that veto. The bottom line, we're not going to move back on workplace protection. We united on behalf of voters, not just Democratic voters, but all voters, to make sure that their right to vote is protected. We won't allow roadblocks that make voting harder, not here in Missouri. We have united on behalf of those who count on us, our children, the blind, the poor, the disabled, the people who need our voice, need our strength, need us not to make, just make speeches, but to get solid progress for them. We have united and made a difference. And we've united on behalf of working families to make sure if working families' rights are protected. Our working families make our community stronger. They make our state stronger. They make our economy stronger. When it comes to the rights of working families, we will not move backwards as other states have. It won't happen here in Missouri. Okay? <laughs> but in order to keep our state moving forward, we've got to win in November. <laughs> and it's going to take a lot of work from everybody here in this room. It's going to take many, many hours of working the phones. Long hot days knocking the doors, putting up signs, blasting out the emails. You know, fellow Democrats, there is too much at stake. We need every one of our players in the game, okay? <laughs> every one of you and every one we can affect, okay? I'm always reminded of a story of when I was, after I got out of law school, I was on a softball team back home that was made up primarily of lawyers, local lawyers. We were very popular in the league, you can only imagine. <laughs> but we were playing against our, one of our arch rivals who was a bit rascally and attempting to intimidate us. Uh, we're all in the dugout, our team's batting. Our shortstop gets a single, he's on first. There's a ball hit into the hole to their shortstop. And as the shortstop comes over to start a double play on our guy, our guy's sliding into second, and their shortstop with the glove, with the ball in his glove, takes it and hits our guy in the head. My shortstop's hard as he could, just to send a little message there. Well, I was so upset, I was going to get ready to bat, I was in the, in the dugout. I ran out to second base to have a, how should we say, a discussion with that shortstop. And we were able to begin to have a discussion after a few moments of being nose to nose and his team I look over and his team completely runs out of the dugout so here I am standing at second base just right at arguing with this guy and his whole team is standing behind him I felt really pretty strong because you know it was a cheap play and I felt like we needed to send a message and then I turned around and the rest of my entire team was still sitting in the dugout behind me okay <laughs> So I, I changed my tone a little bit uh, and was uh, able to uh, uh, thank the shortstop for his aggressive play and, and uh, figured we'd move ahead with the game rather than uh, watching my fellow lawyers see me get my, my, my tail kicked there in front of a bunch of folks. The reason I tell that story now, folks, I mean, 
We can't look around in the dugout and have it not come with us, okay? We can't, look, we can't turn around and say what's behind us and look back there and everybody's sitting on their tail, feet up, having an ice cold one, smiling, okay? We got to get in the game, <laughs> okay? Because if we don't, it's going to be a lot harder hit than just a softball in the glove off somebody's head, okay? These are real games we're playing. This isn't a game where you look up at a scoreboard and shake hands afterwards and walk away. These are the games of life. Those blind folks that rely on that health care that they want to cut, it's not a game. For teachers that have been attacked, that's not a game. For folks that couldn't afford college, and now we're making college available by expanding our A-plus program and standing up our scholarships and doing the other thing, that's, it's not a game. It's real on real, okay? It's, it's, and, and so we got to think about making sure that we are all on the field, playing hard, okay? And, I, and I'm confident that if we do, that it won't just be us that wins, because quite frankly, all of us, everybody here is pretty well taken care of. If you have time to be down to Lake Ozarks on a Saturday, <laughs> wrestling about who gets to go to the National Convention, who doesn't, and all that sort of stuff, you're doing fine, okay? We're doing fine. If that's the biggest problem you got, you're doing fine, okay? Friends, as I stand here today, I can say without hesitation that I am more optimistic than ever about the future of our state. I have had the opportunity as your governor to see people at their strongest and to see people at moments of great tragedy. I have shaken the hand of graduates from community colleges that were the first in their family to graduate. I remember St. Charles Community College. I shook hands with a fellow that had put four kids through that community college while he was working and he got laid off and he went back to school and got his degree and it was an honor to shake his hand and to see his kids right in front applauding their father who had paid for them to go to college and then lost a job and went to college, okay? <laughs> I stood next to folks who before I came by to see them had a house and when I stood there with them after a natural disaster that house was gone with their possessions and in far too many times their families. I stood with farmers on levees that used to exist. I stood with farmers in southeast Missouri. The federal government blew up a levee and washed out 137,000 acres of prime farmland. I mean, I've seen people at the worst and at the best. But through all of that, on both ends of that spectrum, What you learn from this job is you see Missourians that when the times are the toughest, we are the best. We are the strongest. Okay? When I see folks from all faiths and all walks of life rallying together after a devastating flood or tornado, when I see church groups from all over America coming and helping, feeding people when they need it. When I saw t 10, 11 days after I was sworn in the ice storm in Boot Heel and to see folks coming in, when I saw after we, you know, I mean, folks think about these natural disasters. The one I want to, I'm going to tell one quick story because then, then, then you'll get on to your business. And I'm sorry to talk so long, but it, 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 it it's, it's, it's comes with the territory, I guess. We've had a lot of challenges in the, in the, in the weather side. One I want to talk about for just a second was when that, that, that snowstorm came through in 2011. It was a snowstorm that caused me to have to give an order no governor's ever had to give. You know, we had the biggest snowstorm ever in 44 counties. I had to close I-70, basically between St. Louis and Kansas City. Gave the order about 6.30 at night to, to be effectuated at 7.30, to close the number one highway that carries more goods and services than anything. It, it's the lifeline to the, for our country of goods and services. But we were having 27, 28 inches of snow, 40, 50 mile an hour winds, zero degree temperatures, and it was dangerous out there and cars were going to run off and trucks were having trouble and all this sort of stuff. But when I gave that order to shut and clean that road at night, contained with that order was another one, was that every car or truck 
that pulled off that highway for that 200 mile stretch had to have a warm and safe place to go. Okay? Now we don't have enough armories for a National Guard to cover that duty. We don't have enough city halls to cover that. We had to light up our faith-based network. And we called churches all across the region and folks came into those churches in the middle of the night in cold weather, turned on the furnaces, turned on the heat, cooked some coffee, cooked some soup, and they served people who they will never ever see at any time again the rest of their life because they were asked to. There wasn't a law. We didn't pass a law to do it. We didn't give an order to do it. As governor of the state of Missouri, I asked them if they could help. And every single person that pulled off that road had a warm place to go, a safe place to go. Next day, I remember talking to somebody, and they said, Governor, you had to make this order. You had the, ro the roads were open by then. We cleaned them, and traffic was moving forward again. Uh, they said, uh, horrible storm. How many people were killed? And I said, well, we had one lady that ran into a highway patrol car down by True Bay before the storm. But up on the I-70 section, you know, we had pre-positioned armored uh, uh, National Guard vehicles because we knew those five-ton trucks could drive through that deep snow and, and a, a Crown Vic, Vic can't make it through 18 inches of snow in a, in a smooth way. But we had pre-positioned those, and that night, three pregnant women decided they wanted to take the next step. <laughs> Two of those three were successful with our trucks getting them to the hospital. The third, not quite so successful, and delivered a little baby in the back of a five-ton truck. I'm not sure that sergeant had much medical training either, but that's what's in here there. But so when somebody asked me how many people did you lose, I said, you know, actually, we gained a person. You know, uh, uh, <laughs> you know. Now, I tell that story because, as I said before, you see people at their strengths and at their weakness. But every time in this job, you are, you are so motivated that when people come together for a common, important purpose to move our state forward, we can do it. So what I ask for you is really, really simple. First of all, before I ask for anything, I thank you for your great help and for all you've done to give me the high honor and privilege to serve as the Chief Executive of the State of Missouri. It is Georgianne and I um, really, really tremendously thank you for the incredible help and support that you and others have been. It's just it's incredible. But we aren't done. Nowhere near done. We've turned the ship, it's headed in the right direction. Now is the time to accelerate it. Now is the time to take the base that we've laid, to use the values we've proven, to take the strength of experience we have, to jump with this rebound and move forward. And so I just ask each and every one of you to do everything you can, not only to, to tell me and Claire and the rest of our state ticket, but state reps and state senators and others, it really, really makes a difference to have people that share your belief that if you were elected to office, your job is not to be a commentator, but to be a participant in making things better for people. And the people we're working for and the people you're working for at the local level, at the regional level, at the congressional level, at the statewide level, I know them. And so I want each one of you to leave this when you're done today. Go back home focused, but understanding that the work that you are doing, the mechanical work you're doing to lead in your local precincts, to lead in your local towns, makes a difference, a real and lasting difference. We are about the business of leading, of meeting the problems of the future head on. And the best way to succeed for our state at that is to be about the business of winning elections in November. Let's get it done. Thank you.